Hello dear students. In this class, let us learn about the topic vitamins. It was earlier in 1912, Casimir Funk, a Polish biochemist, called these molecules as vitamine, which means they are vital amines or these molecules are amines and are essential or vital for the life. But later it was found that this group of molecules, all of them do not contain amines in their structure. Hence, the letter E was removed and now it is called as vitamins. So, vitamins we define as essential organic micronutrients. So, vitamins are the essential organic micronutrients. So, here essential refers to these molecules are not synthesized in adequate amounts in the body. Hence, they must be a part of the diet or they must be supplied in the diet. That is why they become essential and organic because they are organic in nature and micronutrients refers to these molecules or vitamins are required in very minute amounts or small quantities that is in terms of milligram quantities so we define vitamin as essential organic micronutrients Now, if we look at the classification of vitamins, so vitamins are classified based on their solubility. So, the two major groups are water-soluble vitamins and fat-soluble vitamins. So, these are some of the differences between water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins, as the name itself indicates, they are soluble in water, whereas fat-soluble vitamins, they are insoluble in water coming to the water soluble vitamins the absorption so it is simple intestinal absorption whereas for the fat soluble vitamins for absorption bile salts and lipids are required for the fat soluble vitamins and what about the storage in the body water soluble vitamins are not stored in the body except for vitamin B12. Except for vitamin B12, the rest of the water-soluble vitamins are not stored in the body. Whereas fat-soluble vitamins, they are stored in the body and that too in the liver. So, liver stores the fat-soluble vitamins. And here coming to the uh, excretion, because water-soluble vitamins are not stored in the body, if you are taking excess, so what happens? So, it has a threshold for urinary excretion, which means to say excess of vitamins or excess of water-soluble vitamins are removed in the urine. Whereas fat-soluble vitamins, even if it is excess, they are not excreted, but rather they are stored in the liver. Now, uh, here because they are removed, so, even if you are taking excess intake is also, it doesn't cause any toxic effects in the body. Whereas, fat-soluble vitamins, it can be stored in the liver. Hence, excess intake is toxic or we call it as hypervitaminosis. So, hypervitaminosis is a term refers to when excess of fat-soluble vitamin is accumulated in the body. Okay. So, these are the a group of vitamins and the water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. So, here in water-soluble vitamins, we have vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9 and B12. Together, they are all called as B-complex vitamins and this water-soluble vitamin also includes vitamin C. Then, in fat-soluble vitamins, we have vitamin A, vitamin D, E and K. Here, if you look at the numbers, they are not continuous as B1, B2, B3. Then you don't have B4, B5 is there, 6, 7. Then you don't have B8, B9 is there. Then again, there is 10 and 11 is missing. There is 12. Similar is true here with the A also. You have A here, of course, B, then C, D, E. 
then what about f g h i j you have vitamin k here this is because these missing numbers are the missing alphabets is because earlier some of the molecules were thought to be as vitamins and they were given the numbers see here as after b3 there was a molecule before thinking that it is vitamin given the number as vitamin b4 but later it was dropped from the list of vitamins because it was not uh, coming under the group of vitamins maybe in its structure or in its function or maybe for so many other reasons it was dropped from the list of uh, vitamins by nutritionist over time so same is true here for the b8 also then b10 b11 and here after e you don't have f g h i okay and be complex why we call them because each of these vitamins they are structurally unique and their function is also unique but there is a overlapping of their existence they coexist in the same food as a complex that is why these are all grouped together as b complex vitamins okay i think it is clear so now let us study about these vitamins individually like uh, we'll be going through the dietary sources requirements that is daily requirements their functions and the deficiency symptoms are the deficiency disorders so today let me start with the vitamin b1 which is also called as thiamine so thiamine is the chemical name of vitamin b1 it is also called as anti beriberi factor or anti neuritic factor or heat labile factor heat labile factor refers to it is uh, inactivated this vitamin is inactivated or lost at high temperature hence vitamin b1 is also known as heat labile factor then if you look at the dietary sources the richest source of vitamin b1 or thiamine is whole grains and legumes especially the outer covering of the seeds and the nuts they contain vitamin b1 in plenty of amounts rice polishing is also a very good source of vitamin b1 then cereals contains the vitamin b1 or thiamine germinating seeds are also very good source then uh, in animal source we have pork and eggs they are the good source of vitamin b1 but as i told you it is a heat labile factor overcooking of the legumes or these uh, seeds or the whole grains uh, it will remove the thiamine so the thiamine can be destroyed by overcooking and also over polishing of the rice removes thiamine so after knowing about the dietary sources or the food sources of vitamin b1 now let us know about its requirement so in fact the requirement of uh, this vitamin b1 depends on the intake of carbohydrate this is because vitamin b1 has a role in the carbohydrate metabolism or the energy metabolism so if the intake of carbohydrate is more then the requirement of thiamine is also more so according to national research council of us 1989 it is 0.5 mg of thiamine is required for every 1000 kilo calories fine similarly according to this the rda or the recommended dietary allowance for adult men varies from 1.5 to 2 mg whereas for women it is 1 to 1.2 mg and in case of children it is 0.6 to 1.2 mg so this is about the recommended dietary allowance of vitamin b1 or thiamine which entirely depends on the intake of carbohydrate so now you know about the dietary sources and also the requirement of the vitamin b1 so next let us know about the biological role of this thiamine or the vitamin b1 the active form of the vitamin b1 or thiamine is thiamine pyrophosphate so tpp or thiamine pyrophosphate is the active form of vitamin b1 
So as I told you, this has a role in carbohydrate metabolism and also in amino acid metabolism, especially in the branch chain amino acid metabolism. So vitamin B1 has a role in the metabolism of carbohydrates and amino acids. And it acts as a cofactor for many of the enzymes like pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and transketolase. And it also has a role in neuromuscular transmission. So that is in the muscle contraction and in the transmission of the nerve signal. So after knowing the biological role, now let us learn about the deficiency symptoms of vitamin B1 or the thiamine. So the deficiency of the vitamin B1 is observed as polyneuritis in case of birds, so where the peripheral nerve functions will be impaired. And this leads to the inability of the birds to fly or walk or the uh, or even to stand so neurological disorders and similarly in case of human beings the deficiency of vitamin b1 is called as a beriberi so beriberi actually is a simhalis word or a phrase which refers to i cannot so what is it i cannot so it is a complete weakness state where a person feels that it is not possible so he cannot bear that pain or whatever he is going through that so that is why the name beriberi our extreme weakness is referred to as this uh, beriberi uh, so when this deficiency of the vitamin occurs the deficiency can be due to either poor or inadequate dietary intake what we call as malnutrition or even if you are taking adequate intake also there might be a poor absorption of the vitamin in such case also deficiency symptoms can be seen or increased utilization of the vitamin or increased loss of the vitamin can also lead to deficiency symptoms beriberi uh, actually symbolizes a, a highly incapable condition and this is actually seen in people consuming exclusively of the polished rice so there are different types of beriberi which are seen as wet beriberi here edema is mainly absorbed where edema of the legs face trunk and the serous cavities is seen in case of dry beriberi Edema is not seen, but here it is peripheral neuritis or the peripheral nerves are affected and hence leads to muscle weakness. Then in mixed periphery is a type where both the symptoms of seen, that is symptoms of both wet and the dry periphery is observed. And there is also another type called infantile periphery. This is found in the infants who are born to the mothers already suffering from the thiamine deficiency so in such infants the symptoms include sleeplessness restlessness vomiting and convulsions so other than uh, the beriberi type what we discuss now there are some other symptoms of thiamine deficiency which are observed are loss of appetite nausea mental depression numbness in the lungs and also paralytic symptoms which are also commonly seen in thiamine deficiency so dear students in today's class we have discussed about the classification of vitamins and their uh, different types of vitamins and one of the vitamin that is water soluble vitamin vitamin b1 in detail like its dietary source then uh, requirement biological role and the deficiency disorders i hope today's class all of you have understood if any doubts you can contact me thank you